Hello, I'm Darren Lachelle from Northern California Public Media, and welcome to Drought is Here, Questions and Conversation. Now, over this past year, we've been living through the worst period of drought for over 40 years, and tonight we'll explore how drought is still with us despite the recent record rainfalls that we've experienced. What are the ramifications of the situation, and what can we do as citizens to manage our use of water? Now, I would like to um, introduce our guest, Grant Davis, this evening. He's General Manager of Sonoma Water. Welcome to the program, Grant. Thank you very mm -hmm. much, Dan. Pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Now, we'll get to some questions here in just a second. First, I need to make a programming note. Tonight's program will have Spanish language translation provided by our partners at KJOR, La Mejor 104.1 Spanish Language Radio. Now that translation will be available on the online version of the program as soon as we get that posted. Now in just a moment we'll be answering your questions, but first here is NorCal's Karen Bell to explain how you can ask Grant Davis your questions about our continuing drought. Thank you, Darren. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're standing by to answer your questions tonight. You can email us at viewer at norcalpublicmedia.org, and you can also call us at 1-800-287-2722. That's 1-800-287-2722, or email your questions at viewer at norcalpublicmedia.org. I have two questions that came in early tonight. The first one is from Jan Venucci in Petaluma. Why did, did Jerry Brown, while governor, lift California's drought restrictions? We were still and still are in a severe drought environment. We were still and still are in a severe drought environment. It is my understanding that it takes four years of average to above average rainfall to replace groundwater depletion. Another question from Nancy River in Oakland. In the 1970s, we had a drought. People were conditioned to be mindful of what we used. Lawn watering was directed by alternating sides of the street. Restaurants did automatically serve water, did not automatically serve water, excuse me. They asked if diners wanted large or small sizes and other mandates left us mindful of waste at our sinks. And we didn't flush toilets every time. The question, how does our conservation efforts today compared to those in the past. So those are just two early questions that came up. Remember, you can always email us, viewer at norcalpublicmedia.org, or call us, 1-800-287-2722. We are standing by to take your questions. And back to you, Darren. Well, thank you, Karen. Those are some great questions. And Grant Davis, why don't we start with the question from Jan Venucci in Petaluma. So she talks about um, when Jerry Brown was governor, um, he lifted drought restrictions. So can you speak to that? I actually learned in my career not to speak for Jerry Brown. <laughs> uh, he was really quite uh, clear about that he had big visions. And I, I, one thing I think he understood about drought is that we get multiple droughts. And if you're always talking about communicating drought and you must conserve at some level, at some point, folks turn off and they need a break. Uh, and so the state actually did a very good job back in that last drought period uh, to encourage folks starting with voluntary and then mandatory conservation. Uh, and the rainfall patterns shifted. So uh, I think the theme tonight is even in a period of extreme mm -hmm. weather. Right. For example, in 2019, we had record floods. Kernville was completely inundated. Go to 2020, 2021, and we're in record droughts. So it's this extreme characterization of water management. And so I think Governor Brown at that time felt that uh, we needed to give a break, give people a rest so they could prepare for the next drought. Got it. So when we look at the next question from Nancy River, great name by the way, Nancy, for tonight's program in Oakland, um, she's talking about all the conservation measures we took in the 70s and how do those compare to what we're doing today? That's a great question actually. Um, earlier in the year, uh, in April uh, 21st of this year, Governor Newsom actually was in Lake Mendocino, which is our second largest reservoir that we co-manage with the Corps of Engineers. And he reminded all of us before that press conference declaring a drought, uh, how he grew up in Marin County and had to uh, learn the ways of water conservation. And one of them was putting a brick in the back of your toilet to displace the water and oh, use yeah. less water. Right, right. And we all nodded because we grew up mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. I'm pleased to say that water conservation is becoming 
part of our culture, part of our ethic. And um, for example, at Sonoma Water, we train about 12,000 students a year in water education. When you think we've been doing that now for 15 years, mm -hmm. you grow up understanding how the value of water and how to use it wisely, where it comes from. So our community has responded quite well to the call to conserve. Uh, the state is asking for 15 to 20 percent voluntary conservation. In our neck of the woods up in the North Bay, we had communities like Healdsburg saving 40 percent over last wow. year's water. water. It's and, quite a bit. Uh, it's quite a bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Cloverdale came close to that and on down. Uh, we achieved over a 20 percent diversion reduction out of the Russian River, which is our primary drinking water source. So the community is responding and they've learned the lessons of the 70s and circa up to, up to date. Great. Well, on that note about the Russian River, we're going to take a look now at a video that explores where our water comes from in Sonoma County and much of the North Bay in general. So we'll explore the water cycle and learn about how water is stored and clean filtered for our use. Now this video is from NorCal's Bay Area Bountiful Environmental Initiative. It is all too easy for us to take our beautiful Sonoma County waterways for granted. But when water comes out of your tap, do you ever think about how it got there? I'm sad to say that most folks in Sonoma County are not always aware where their water comes from. It comes from the Russian River. The Russian River is the primary source of drinking water for most of Sonoma County. And it's incumbent upon every one of us to use water wisely. There's never enough to waste. Our water cycle starts with rain. When rainwater falls, it is collected in streams, rivers, and lakes, like the man-made reservoirs Lake Mendocino and Lake Sonoma. This collected water is released periodically into the Russian River throughout the year to ensure an adequate supply of drinking water and river water for fish. Next, water from the Russian River is diverted to infiltration ponds, where it trickles down into the ground and is naturally filtered by sands and gravels. This natural filtration process means we don't need to add a multitude of chemicals to treat our drinking water. When the filtered water is at the correct depth underground, it is pumped up by collector wells near the river. Next, some chlorine is added for disinfection and the water is transported through two main aqueducts or pipes to cities in Sonoma County. And finally, clean, naturally filtered drinking water arrives at your tap. Once we, as a community, understand just how vital the Russian River is in providing us with drinkable water, we can take action to preserve this precious resource. I hope that residents of Sonoma County and the North Bay and the North Coast realize how fortunate we are that we have the Russian River as a primary source of drinking water. We can't take that for granted. Being responsible caretakers of our land, water, and wildlife is essential for our survival. Because what affects our water affects us. Looking at those shots of the Russian River, I mean, it is a beautiful, beautiful um, waterway, but it's also so important to our lives here in Sonoma County in the North Bay. A lot of communities get their water um, from the Russian River. Um, my first question for you is about the reservoirs mm -hmm. and, and the lakes. So we have Lake Sonoma and Lake Mendocino. And, you know, talk a little bit about the, how the water levels were earlier this year, how they are now, and where you think they might go in the future. Sure. Um, we co-manage two reservoirs with the Army Corps of Engineers, Lake Mendocino up in Mendocino County, which is smaller, has no carryover storage, and it was built in 1958. Interestingly enough, the last mega drought we had in the 76, 77 era is what was the precursor for building Lake Sonoma. That was our response to that drought. And it's a larger reservoir, has multi-year storage, and is really our security blanket for drinking water for our community. So what a difference a month makes. Uh, if you went back to October 1, which is the start of the new water year, 
we were looking at a reservoir at Lake Mendocino with about 14,000 acre feet of water in it, which was far too low. That's something that mm -hmm. was below what we thought was, was uh, safe going forward into the new year. And then a atmospheric river came to our region. Hopefully many of your viewers felt that and experienced that right. soggy, soggy period. But uh, that put in another 4,000 acre feet into Lake Mendocino. So it's now above 18,000 acre feet of storage. Wow. We can need a lot more of those, but it's, yeah. the, right, it's the right progress. Uh, Lake Sonoma was down at around 108,000 acre feet. That atmospheric river came in and dropped in enough water to bring it over 120,000 acre feet. So moving in the right direction, mm -hmm. but tonight's message is that even though we've gotten a good amount of rain to start the new year, new water year, we have a long way to go. We need multiple storms and folks need to continue to conserve. So uh, following up on that uh, question, it must be very difficult to uh, manage the release from those reservoirs and to try to figure out how to do that because the river, I mean, we depend on it, but so does a lot of wildlife and agriculture, right? Absolutely. It's one of the most difficult challenges we have. We've got mm -hmm. operators that are trained to work with uh, the conditions and we are required as the Sonoma Water Agency to manage for fish flows and minimum in-stream flows in both Lake Mendocino and out of Lake Sonoma. And when you have folks diverting from there uh, for their own needs, you need to account for that. You also have water loss for, to evapotranspiration. Uh, and so it's a constant challenge. And what it means is you have to measure with a buffer. The more precise you get, the mm -hmm. better are we are at saving water behind the reservoirs for later use. But when there's a lot of diversion occurring, you have to account for that and have a buffer so that you can meet your minimum in-stream flows for fish purposes. That sounds great. So a lot of work is going into that. So, you know, we've asked a lot of questions here already, but I know that you, the audience, has quite a few more questions for us tonight. So we're going to go over to Karen and hear what some of those questions are coming in. Karen? Thank you. Please send your questions in to us. You can call us at 1-800-287-2722, or you can send them via, by email, viewer at norcalpublicmedia.org. I do have a question here from Brian C. Assuming the Sonoma County Water Agency, United States Geological Survey, state water resources studies are at or near completion, when are Sonoma County aquifers recharged and related infrastructure projects slated to begin? So that is a question from Brian C. And again, you can email us your questions, viewer at norcalpublicmedia.org or call us 1-800-287-2722. Back to you, Darren. So let's take that first question from Brian C. So he talks about um, Sonoma County water, the U.S. Geological Survey, um, aquifers being recharged, and infrastructure projects slated to begin. It's a great question. Mm -hmm. Obviously, somebody that knows the type of studies that we're it involved in. It sounds like in. it, right. So great work, Brian. Uh, I would just state, for me, the best answer to that one is we earlier this year, just last month, brought online a new uh, 1.5 million gallon well that had to be refurbished as part of this drought response. And uh, aquifers take a while to recharge. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we were doing with this was helping to address the clear and immediate needs down in the southern part of our service area, down in a, a customer base in Petaluma, uh, where we worked out with the customer being Petaluma for trucking that water out of the system into areas where there was severe drought with the agricultural community, primarily dairies and some of the livestock. Uh, we also had the bulk of that water, though, going to our water customers. Those are retailers like Santa Rosa, Windsor, all the way down into Marin County. Mm -hmm. And those are the types of projects that we need to see more of to make it through and, and make it through this drought and future droughts. Absolutely. And also, I wanted to ask you about um, how folks are doing on recycling water. We hear a lot about gray water systems and things like that. That seems like maybe a, a large obstacle to get over to install, um, but are things like that being implemented in great numbers? Yeah, I'd like to, when I think about recycled water on mm -hmm. a large scale, uh, what we've done over the years, literally over the last 15 years actually, is we've created a strong working relationship through something called the North Bay Water Reuse Authority. And it's designed to work all of the three major water providers 
and the sanitation districts collaborating on projects to expand the use of recycled water out throughout the municipalities. One of the larger projects that Sonoma Water is responsible for was getting water from the Sonoma Valley treatment plant down into the Napa Sonoma marshes on the northern end of the bay yeah. to help reduce the bittern and, and bring those uh, wetlands back to life. Mm -hmm. And the water that we brought there then is coming back into the system now and is able to be things uh, to irrigate ball fields and other wonderful uses that can extend our drinking water supplies further. So a very coordinated collaborative effort, I'm pleased to say in the North Bay through the North Bay Water Reuse Authority. Great. Now here's a question that actually comes from some of our reporters here when uh -huh. we were talking about the program tonight. An explanation of what the State Water Resources Control Board is hmm. and how that works into the decisions and mandates and things. Well, I have to be careful there. I would mm -hmm. say that the State Water Resources Control Board, or the State Water Board is what mm -hmm. it's known as, is one of the definitive state bodies that regulates water supply and water quality throughout California. It just so happens that they're the entity that prescribed uh, the curtailment of diversions out of the Russian River this year and really takes a leadership position in uh, monitoring our water supplies, our rivers and streams, and anyone that's diverting. So they have a tremendous amount of power. Uh, it's a, a appointed body up in, up in Sacramento, and they are administering water rights. Mm -hmm. And water rights are really uh, complex, uh, depending on when you got your water right, whether they're pre-1914 or post. Right. And there's junior and senior, and they basically keep that tabulation up. So it's a, a fairly complex agency with a lot of power. There, interestingly enough, are regional boards as well that are a party to that. So we have the North Coast Regional Water Quality Control Board up right here in Santa Rosa. Mm -hmm. And then in Oakland, you've got the Bay Area Regional Water Quality Control Board. And in tandem, those locals work with the state to better manage our water supply. Great. So speaking about water agencies managing supplies, we're going to take a look at um, this next short video that explores how other Bay Area counties are dealing with drought and water shortages. So let's take a look at how some of the measures are being undertaken by Valley Water in Santa Clara County um, to conserve water for the South Bay. Everyone in the Bay Area needs water. How it's provided to them varies from county to county where each locale has different resources. In the South Bay, the Santa Clara Valley Water District, also known as Valley Water, serves two million residents. Our experts are saying climate change and extreme weather may be a regular part of our life and we're seeing it in the headlines everywhere. What Valley Water is doing is we are preparing, we are asking folks to conserve. The great water is a sustainable way to reuse water. There's a wide variety of ways that you can do that. But it's going to take all the effort of the community for us to get through this moment and future moments. Valley Water manages 10 dams and reservoirs. We have four treatment plants. Three of those are supplied by the reservoirs. And then we manage 150 miles of large diameter pipe. We were in extreme drought. That was a very severe stage. We're now in exceptional drought the highest and most severe stage. So we're getting an A plus in drought for sure. It's been the driest year since 1977. Our rainfall has been the lowest it's, it's been in a long time. And our reservoir levels are also at an all time low. When you see reservoirs this low, it's just a, a place where we need to be concerned. Turn off the water when brushing your teeth. Make sure your washer is full before starting it. It's going to take the cooperation of the entire county, of everyone, every drop, for us to save. Instead of a bath, think about taking a five-minute shower. We're excited about that, but we got a long way to go. So agencies and citizens all throughout the Bay Area are doing what they can to conserve water and finding some innovative ways to do that. So of course we have Grant Davis with us here, General Manager of Sonoma County Water, Sonoma Water. And Grant, you know, does Sonoma Water collaborate with other Bay Area agencies like Valley Water on different projects and conservation measures? Absolutely. Yeah. Valley Water, what you just saw in that, that video there, is one of our key partners I was just down there less than a month ago, and we are working in collaboration with all our Riberia Water Partners 
on something called AQPI. Mm -hmm. It's a wonky name, but it's called Advanced Quantitative Precipitation Information. It's basically putting a series of next generation radars up on the mountains around the bay. Valley Water has one already. We have one at Sonoma Water. Uh, East Bay Mud and, and counterparts are putting one up on the Rocky Ridge in the East Bay. So, uh, Mount Tam will have one later in the year. That type of collaboration is going to be required to meet the challenges of extreme weather in the future. So these radars will be giving us accurate precipitation so you know three hours from now what block to avoid or where to evacuate, what's going to be closed down. And it's going to take a while, but the collaboration that's ensued in partnership with Valley Water and our counterparts is just phenomenal. It sounds like it's going to add a level of precision that it seems almost unimaginable. It is the next generation, and it's capturing mm -hmm. those atmospheric rivers that I spoke about earlier. Mm -hmm. the, fa the reason we need this is the current radars are elevated at about 10,000 acre feet, 10,000 foot level. Like when you fly into SFO, you hear that ding? That's just an artifact. That's 10,000 feet there for a reason. Radars have to be about half that at 5,000 to capture ARs where they come in and really dump a lot of rain that cause our drought, cause our droughts and our flooding. Mm -hmm. Lack of ARs mean drought, which is what we're experiencing now. Right. Presence of ARs mean flooding. We got to understand that side of the equation now as well, believe it or not. Wow, so a lot of science is going into this. Yes. And I know that we have a lot of more questions coming in this evening. I've been hearing the phone rings there in the background. So Karen, what are we hearing from folks? What do they want to find out about? Yeah, thanks, Darren. Quite a few questions have come in. The first one from Christine Cadaro. The state of California has been mandating new housing construction to the tune of several million units of new housing all over the state and directed especially at less populated counties. How on earth can we possibly demand or plan for new housing for millions of people when water is in short supply even now? The next question from Kathy O'Donnell. I'm planning a bathroom remodel on my house and I'm wondering what things I can do to capture gray water from my shower and sink for use uh, in outdoor watering. And then from John Wincunis, is it true that 80% of California's water resources are used for agriculture? If so, why are almond growers allowed to flood their fields as opposed to dripping irrigation like they do in other countries? And the last question I have is, how much will rates go up due to conservation efforts? So those are just the questions. Please continue to get your questions in. You can call us 1-800-287-2722 or email viewer at norcalpublicmedia.org. Thanks. Thanks, Karen. I think that first question from Christine is a pretty key question. Um, we need housing in the Bay Area. We all know it. But when a lot of this housing is being built, um, especially in rural areas, like Christine says, you know, where's that water going to come from? That's a really yeah. fundamental question. Uh, when you think about the nexus between land use and water use, it's definitely there. Uh, in our own case up in the North Bay, um, I continue to believe that the housing, uh, if it's more focused on the metropolitan areas and the more urban areas, mm -hmm. you're going to be at more efficiency. So I was just speaking to a conference uh, earlier this morning where this topic came up. And the folks from Gen Housing were pointing out how much more efficient a two-plex, a four-plex is uh, going to be with current water conservation st standards. So I would say a pathway for the future is for the folks that are building housing to consider investing in the older stock in inefficiencies. There's plenty of efficiencies to be had. They can identify new sources of water and invest in the offsets that are going to be created by the new housing because we do need... Clearly, we need affordable housing and a lot more moderate housing for our region to fill those jobs and to be part of our community. I don't want water to be the limiting factor. We need to be more efficient is what we need. Right. And here we have just a little over a minute left, but I think that last question we had from John about agriculture mm -hmm. is probably one we should explore. Um, how water is um, allocated for agriculture? It's true that uh, agriculture in the state of California does use the lion's share of the water supply. Mm -hmm. So finding ways to be more efficient is going to be first and foremost uh, an option. There's going to be a lot of land coming out uh, retired from agriculture and depending on what goes in there will depend on whether we get water savings out of that or not. So uh, working with the agricultural community, coming up with a way to, to meet their, uh, their needs but urging them to use water wisely right. as well on crops that are not going to be as water intensive. 
The interesting thing about oliveins, I will just say that was asked earlier, mm -hmm. the opportunity there is actually to flood up those fields and recharge the aquifers adjacent to the, 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 where the, the almonds are being fields. grown. Yeah. And, and it's a way that an environmental benefit can actually come out of that. Great. Well, here we are at the end of the program. Any last words about conservation that you want to leave with people tonight? I would just say that folks that are in our service area for Sonoma Water, they're doing a great job. They need to keep it up. We have to wait through this winter to see what Mother Nature brings. And thank you profusely for that. All right. Sounds great. Well, thank you so much to Grant Davis, General Manager of Sonoma Water. And thanks for being with us tonight. No doubt. Our conversation with you continues online at norcalpublicmedia.org, where we'll follow up with any of your unanswered questions we didn't have time to get to tonight. So thanks to our partners, and also thanks from me and Karen and everyone at NorCal Public Media, and good night. You're watching Northern California Public Media, made possible by viewers like you.